In fact, the solid rocket boosters that we have have four segments to them. And those segments are disconnected, they're refilled, and then they're rejoined again for each new flight. That's how NASA operates its program. So what we'll do is have a pedigree, in other words, a record, of each of those segments and how they flew in the past. So if you take one of the solid rocket motors and you look at the first segment and the second, the third, and the fourth, okay, they're all joined together by something called O-rings. And the O-rings are designed to make sure that two pieces of metal, which can never be perfectly machined so that there's no leakage, have a little squishiness so that it's like a gasket on the engine of your car and it just prevents gaseous leaking. Is that holding you under pressure, all right? So if you take every one of those segments, each one of them could have flown any number of flights because they disassemble things and then they reassemble them in NASA. So one might have flown on Discovery three times and another segment on the other booster might have flown on, let's say, Atlantis two times. Some of them might have flown two times on Atlantis, one time on Endeavor, three times on Challenger. There are steel casings and they're used over and over and over again. The only thing that was not reused was the external tank. That burned up in the atmosphere. You know? The reason that we have the solid rocket boosters is because they never leave the atmosphere. They peel off of the rocket. Okay, the shuttle launches. It takes eight and a half minutes to get to orbit, right? About two minutes into that flight, the boosters have done their job, and so they peel off and go in opposite directions. There are four engines that you see on the side. Those are little thruster engines. They make sure that when the solid boosters leave, they go out and away from the shuttle, and they don't come into it, because remember, it's continuing its, its uh, ascent into space. And so two minutes into the flight, those are gone. They've never left the atmosphere, so parachutes can come out, and we can safely get them back. But the, at the additional six minutes of the flight, by the time the shuttle is on orbit, it's way outside the atmosphere, and it's moving incredibly quickly. So when it drops the external tank, and that external tank comes back into the atmosphere, it burns up. It's a matter of speed. These are not going that fast, and they're inside the atmosphere. And, by the way, they're on their way up, whereas the external tank is outside the atmosphere. It's reached orbital velocity. And what happens, a lot of people don't think about it, but when the shuttle flies, the shuttle actually flies usually with the back of the shuttle down to the Earth. So it's flying upside down usually with the back of the shuttle down to the earth. So it's flying upside down. And in order to drop that tank, the whole, this, you know, this is the shuttle, my figure of the wing, this is the external tank. The whole, it's called RTHU, roll to head up. The whole vehicle rolls to head up. And then the shuttle, I'm gonna go sideways so you can see, the shuttle jettisons the tank. It's moving at orbital speed. It goes back into the atmosphere and the shuttle raises its velocity and raises its altitude so it takes a circular path around the Earth. So it basically jettisons the tank. The tank doesn't have quite enough velocity to stay in orbit. So it just follows an elliptical path, actually, right back into the atmosphere and burns up.